Remember that R group? The side chain? The weird sibling in the family? You know, the one that puts milk before cereal? You know who you are. They basically define the amino acid. They give the amino acid their properties. And the 20 amino acids are classified into different groups based on these properties, which we'll be going over today. So amino acids are divided into two main factions. There's nonpolar, and then there's polar. Nonpolar amino acids are hydrophobic because hydro means water and phobic is similar to phobia. They don't like water, they want to avoid water. Polar on the other hand, because water is polar and polar things like polar things in nature, they are hydrophilic, which means they are water loving. Under nonpolar, we have alcohol groups and aromatic groups. And then under polar, we have neutral, acidic, and basic. Quick PSA, you know how when you go to the doctor with some sort of condition and then they diagnose you? Hi doctor, I have six overdue assignments. Yeah, you have crippling lack of motivation to study. Oh. And then they just scribble across a page like this, and then they diagnose you and then they hand it to you, and the pharmacist is like, cool. Well, it's actually a system of abbreviations. One of them is called American Greg Shorthand, and doctors use it to diagnose patients really quickly. Well, organic chemists needed something like that too, because in organic chemistry, literally everything is made up of carbon and hydrogen, with a few nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, and sulfur sprinkled in between. Kind of like how my entire diet is based on white rice, and everything else just kind of goes with it. But anyway, back to carbons and hydrogen. Scientists didn't want to write all the carbon and hydrogens out, so they used this sort of system. Whenever there are carbons, usually with hydrogens attached, we'll just do something like this. And at each point here is a carbon, and if nothing else is attached to it, you can assume that there's hydrogens attached. So I'll be using these to draw amino acids later because I really couldn't be bothered to draw it out like this. So yeah, this has been a public service announcement. Let's start with nonpolar amino acids. So as mentioned before, it's normally split into two subgroups, alkyl and aromatics. Alkyl basically means that it's only composed of carbon and hydrogen. And aromatic means that they come in stable rings that help support the molecule. So under aqua, we're going to list a bunch of amino acids, but with the help of editing, you won't have to see me write all of them out. And here they are. Glycine, alanine, valine, methionine, leucine, isoleucine, and proline. Now, I know I said they only contain carbon and hydrogen, but that's a loose definition because methionine actually also contains sulfur. And as for aromatic, we only have two amino acids that are nonpolar and aromatic which are phenylalanine and tryptophan. Now you might think, wait a second, tyrosine is also aromatic too because it has a ring in it. However, tyrosine is actually polar, so it's not included in this nonpolar aromatic group. Classification can be messy sometimes. Moving on to polar amino acids, it's divided into three groups. Polar neutral charge groups are basically amino acids that are polar, which means they have parts of them that are positive and negative, but they have a overall charge of zero because the charges cancel out. The other two groups are polar amino acids that actually have enough charge in one particular area that they cause the entire amino acid to have a specific charge, either positive or negative. Acidic amino acids are negatively charged because they have a tendency to give up a hydrogen ion and become negative. These contain carboxyl groups, which if you remember is COOH, and that is where the H is given up so that it becomes COO minus, giving it a negative charge. And as for the basic amino acids, they are often positively charged because they contain amine groups, which is the NH2, as I mentioned before. Don't these look familiar? These are actually the amine carboxyl groups on the original amino acid backbone. But these are found in the side chains instead. And this amine group has a tendency to gain another proton slash hydrogen ion and become NH3+. And then with the power of editing, I will list all of the following for you here. Under the polar neutral amino acids, we have serine, therine, asparagine, glutamine, cysteine, and tyrosine. And for the acidic amino acids, we have aspartic acid and glutamic acid. They're pretty easy to remember since they literally have acid in their name. And for basic, we have lysine, histidine, and arginine. 
But wait, there's more. There's actually a term called essential amino acids. These are amino acids you need to pay attention to when you're eating because you need to get these amino acids into your diet. If not, you're gonna die because the body cannot produce these amino acids. We have to get them from good protein sources such as meat, poultry, eggs, and some vegetables. I use this mnemonic to help me remember the nine essential amino acids, which is PV Hillmit because I think of like a PVC helmet. I just think it'd be really funny if we had a helmet made out of PVC. And helmets are essential. So there you go. So what we have is my moral enemy and allow... And these amino acids are phenylalanine, valine, histidine, isoleucine, Leucine, lysine, methionine, tyrosine, and tryptophan. Hope you had a good day. Bye!